Have you ever downloaded or made a 3D model? Happily put it into your slicer just to realize that it's going to take days for the print to finish. Or maybe you've done a print that you've been expecting greatness from just to be put down by the fact that it looks like a sad turd. My name is Mike, I'm an engineer and today I'm going to teach you how to use the right tool for the job. As I'm sure you know, a 3D printer has a lot of parts, and most of them you shouldn't mess with unless you really know what you're doing. However, the nozzle is one of the few exceptions here. The nozzle is the last component that the plastic goes through before ending up on your build area. It's heated to around 200 degrees Celsius normally, and your printer has probably come with a brass nozzle. There are other materials used for special applications, but I will cover that in a different video. It has a thread in one end that connects it to your printer and a small round hole in the other to make sure that the plastic comes out the correct size. This hole size is key here and it affects a few things. The resolution of your print. With a FDM printer, you know one that uses plastic string filament that the common Ender series from Creality, you can never have a perfect 90 degree outer corner. You will always get a radius that is half the diameter of the nozzle. Let's have a look in the slicer and compare. As you can see, the 0.2mm nozzle creates a sharper corner than the 0.8. As a result, the details on your print will be less with a larger nozzle. At least in Cura you can see the preview mode here, and as you can see this thin line, and uh, the 0.8mm nozzle doesn't get as far out into the thinnest area as the 0.2 does. Print time. A larger nozzle will be able to push out more plastic and you can usually have less walls in your print since the printed line widths are wider. This may be a restriction in your hot end. That's the part that heats the plastic and nozzle and if that isn't effective enough, you may have issues melting the plastic when you up the flow of the plastic. So this may be counteracted in a few ways. You could increase the temperature slightly, and this is what I've done and it worked for me. You could down the print speed slightly, and this will prolong the print time a little bit, but it may still, you know, net a quicker print time if you have a larger nozzle. I print fine with 50mm uh, per second with my stock Ender 3. You could also change the hot end. There are a few to choose from on the market, just make sure it will fit your 3D printer. However, I would recommend against it if you're a beginner. Possible layer thickness. It is recommended to keep the layer thickness within 25 to 75% of the nozzle diameter. This means that the recommended layer thicknesses for some common nozzle diameters are well shown on the screen right now because I don't want to say all those numbers. As you can see you will be able to print a lot thicker layers with a wider nozzle and decreasing the print time even more. Although the same challenge with the melting the plastic effectively it will also be true here. Strength is another thing, and unfortunately I don't have the equipment to test, but I'm sure that the thicker plastic is stronger in most cases. I bought this kit from a company called 3D Prima, they are not a sponsor of this video. Uh, that includes a few different sizes, and I think it works great for me, I've been able to pick and choose what works best. Changing the nozzle might seem difficult, but once you've done it a couple of times, it really only takes a few minutes. So the first thing you need to do is set the nozzle temperature for 200 degrees. You raise the set axis to get a better view and working space. You pull the filament back a little bit. You unscrew the nozzle using a tool that probably was included with the printer. Now you need to be careful of the hot nozzle, so you might need something to catch it in. Screw the new nozzle in all the way. It doesn't have to be super tight, but definitely more than a finger tight. If it is too loose, it will leak and it will mess up your printer head. Then you need to re-level your bed, change the line widths in your slicer, and you should also calibrate 
for the new nozzle to get the most of the quality. Let's find out how the nozzle affects our prints in real life. I downloaded this popular Baby Yoda file from Thingiverse. We will print it at 50% size to get even more fine details and keep the printing time to a reasonable amount. I am going to print with a layer height of half the nozzle diameters. So same temperature, speed, wall thickness, infill, etc. to keep the comparison as fair as I can. As you can see, the 0.8mm nozzle is the quickest at 46 minutes, followed by the smaller nozzles accordingly. Uh, you have the data on the screen, but 0.2 was roughly 8.5 times slower than 0.8. But now let's go to the interesting part, detailed finish. Here the 0.2mm nozzle is the best, and you can really see the corners and details best here. 0.8mm nozzle looks like Baby Yoda had a few too many tequila shots. Now, to get the best performance, I really should have calibrated the flow and uh, the profile in general for each nozzle size. That would have helped quite a bit, but I think this comparison is clear enough to make my point. So, which nozzle should you go with? Personally, I print mostly functional stuff where the finish doesn't really matter that much. So I've settled for 0.6mm 95% of the time. When I print finer stuff like uh, this or especially leather stamps, I will print with a 0.2mm nozzle. The standard 0.4 is never used anymore almost. Now, one of the negative sides of very small nozzles is that they are more prone to clogging, which happened with the marble effect filament here and that's why the 0.2mm Baby Yoda is in another color. I would advise to not use the kind of marble filament or you know special effects filament on very small nozzles. So in conclusion, bigger nozzles, faster but not as pretty. I recommend buying a kit with a few different nozzle sizes and try for yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, perhaps you would like uh, this one on the screen right now about making complex prints quicker with the correct use of supports.